Hello. In this video, we are going to derive expressions for the kinetic energy in terms of the linear momentum for both classical mechanics and for quantum mechanics. First, we'll recall two important relationships from classical mechanics that we can calculate the magnitude of the kinetic energy that's equal to one half times the mass of the object times its velocity squared. For the linear momentum, we use the symbol P for momentum. And if we're talking about the momentum in the x direction, we put a little x as a subscript. And the magnitude here is going to be the mass times the velocity in the x direction. So now let's see how we can write an expression for the kinetic energy in terms of the linear momentum. The first thing we're going to do is simply write out our definition of the kinetic energy one more time. We have our one half times mv squared. And then we're just going to use the fact that v squared is v times v. So we have one half times m times v times v. The trick we're going to do now is we know that if we multiply any value by the number one, we don't change its value. So we're going to write the number one in a very particular way here. We're going to write it as the fraction m divided by m. Now, so long as the mass is not equal to zero, we're okay. This is a legitimate way to write the number one. So now, once we've done that, what do we have? Well, we have one half times m times v times v times m, all divided by m. We can now use the fact that since we're multiplying ordinary quantities here in classical mechanics, these values will commute. So I can, we can write them in any particular order that we like. So we're going to write them in the particular order of writing them as mv times mv on the top. We're going to combine the one half and just simply put that as a two in the denominator times the m in the denominator. So we can see that we just simply rewritten this particular expression in this suggested form. So now we're going to use the definition of a square in the reverse of what we did up here. So we can write the numerator as the quantity mv squared. So mv mv is simply mv squared. We're going to leave the denominator the same way that we had it, divided by 2m. <coughs> now we'll notice that mv, this particular quantity, is simply the linear momentum in the x direction. So we can write the numerator as px squared. The denominator stays exactly the same, and we're left with the expression p squared divided by 2m. So this is the expression in classical mechanics that we wanted to derive. We'll see later on that writing the kinetic energy in this particular form is often a very useful thing to do. Now we would like to derive an expression for the kinetic energy in terms of the linear momentum that will apply in quantum mechanics. So first, let us notice here we have the classical expression for the kinetic energy is equal to the linear momentum squared divided by 2m. And then also remind ourselves that in quantum mechanics, for every observable, just like the momentum or the kinetic energy are observables, things that we can measure in the real world, there is an associated operator. And we denote the operator by putting this little triangle, a little hat, a carrot, over top of the observable. And this reminds us that this is the linear momentum operator. And the linear momentum operator in quantum mechanics has the somewhat peculiar form of h bar over i times the first derivative, d dx. So our trick is to derive further quantum mechanical expressions 
is often to simply take a classical expression and replace each of the classical observables by the corresponding quantum mechanical operator. What does that mean here? Well, what we want to do is we want to take this value of the momentum in the x direction and simply replace this expression by the quantum mechanical operator that we have. So, but we have first something peculiar in the sense that we have px squared. And we have to figure out how we can substitute an operator in for this squaring business. And what we want to see is that when we write this px squared and then convert it into quantum mechanics, what we're actually doing is taking the linear momentum operator and having it act on the linear momentum operator. So what we, the appropriate substitution for px squared in classical mechanics in quantum mechanics is to have the linear momentum operator act on the linear momentum operator. So it's not actually multiplying, it's actually acting as an operator. So what do we get when we do that? Well, what we're going to get here, let's just write out what the definition of the operator is. So for the leftmost operator, we have h bar over i times the first derivative. So this is the leftmost p sub x hat. Now let's write the rightmost operator, which works exactly the same way. It's h bar over i times the first derivative. So now what we want to do is to simplify this particular expression. So what can we do? Well, the first thing that we can do is we notice that we have a derivative operator acting on this expression to the right-hand side. And we can always pull constants through the differential operator because the differential operator is linear. We can pull the h bar over, over i through this particular operator. So what do we get when we do that? We get h bar over i times h bar over i. That's just simply pulling this h bar over i through this operator. Then we have the leftmost derivative operator and then the rightmost first derivative operator. What can we do now? <clears throat> well, we can make a simple substitute, um, simplification. If we have h bar times h bar is h bar squared, it's simply a constant, so we can treat it as a constant. And then in the denominator, we have i times i is i squared. So that handles the h bar over i. What do we need to do for the derivative operators? Well, we know from calculus that the first derivative of the first derivative is simply the second derivative. So we can write this as a second derivative operator, d squared dx squared. So where this is the second derivative. And we're almost complete. All that's left to do is to recognize the fact that um, i squared has a value of minus 1. So we can rewrite this particular expression as minus h bar squared times the second derivative. And this gives us an expression for the momentum in the x direction squared part of the kinetic energy but it doesn't give us the entirety of the expression for the kinetic energy, it just gives us the numerator. So now we have to incorporate the divided by 2m part into an expression for the kinetic energy. We recall that in quantum mechanics, for every particular observable, there is a corresponding operator. We notice that for the linear momentum in classical mechanics, there is a quantum mechanical linear operator. Similarly, for the kinetic energy, there is an associated operator in quantum mechanics. Now, for the momentum, to get the appropriate operator, we simply put this little caret over top of the same momentum symbol that we used for the observable. It's very slightly different for the kinetic energy. We don't simply put a caret over uh, E sub K. 
we have a particular symbol we use, which is the letter T. So T hat is the quantum mechanical operator that corresponds to the observable of kinetic energy. So, continuing here, we have substituting the corresponding quantum mechanical operator, we have P sub X squared divided by 2M. And we know exactly what P sub X squared is in the quantum mechanical version because we worked that out already. So let's substitute in. We have minus H bar squared times the second derivative with respect to X. So this gives us the P sub X squared part, but we still have the 2M. Well, corresponding to the mass is simply mass. So we leave this as 2M. So no particular uh, complications in quantum mechanics as far as the mass goes. So what do we have? We actually have the final version of the kinetic energy operator in quantum mechanics. And we got it by simply taking the classical expression and replacing each observable by the corresponding quantum mechanical operator. And we're able to derive the kinetic energy operator in quantum mechanics as minus h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative with respect to x. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.